Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Playwright tutorial, we are going to learn how you are going to write your first test case from scratch within Playwright. Now, when we created the Playwright project and we installed Playwright, we have got all the dependencies in the node modules and everything has been created. The project structure has been created for us, right? And there was a sample test within tests folder. So this is the sample test, which is uh, one of the tests that we executed in the last video as well. Now, if we try to understand line by line this particular test, you will see that the first line that we have here is basically it's kind of a import or importing the dependencies, okay? So if we go to the documentation here and you will see that this is a TypeScript example. Okay. And what we have here is the JavaScript because we have chosen JavaScript language to document our test cases. Okay. So in the TypeScript, it is more clear. Basically, the first line is importing the test and expect. Okay. These are the keywords that we are importing from where? From the Playwright test. So basically what this Playwright, this is what you have installed, right? So Playwright you have installed and it's a ingredient. It's basically a bucket of ingredients right and now from those ingredients what you want to make i want to test something okay so basically you are saying okay i want to have a functionality of test and then i also want to validate something using the expect keyword okay so expect is more of the validating expecting something with the uh, or checking something with expected and actual results right so this is what we are doing and similarly if there is something else or some other keywords that will be required will be also we have the flexibility like in Java, we import, right? We import the classes so that we can create objects and use the methods that are defined within there. So it's kind of Playwright is a bucket of all the ingredients that we have installed. And now from there, whatever we need, we'll import and then we'll start writing our test cases. Okay. So here we have imported test and expect because you'll see the test keyword and the expect keyword we are using. And then based on that, we'll be writing our test case right so this is the typescript example now let me go back and what we'll do is we will simply go ahead and create a new example from scratch you don't have to worry about you know so what i'll do is in the tests i'll create a new file okay and new file you know the the structure is dot spec dot js right so it has to follow this end with dot spec dot js so i'll simply say okay first test okay and then dot spec dot js and it will be recognized and you will see that this is the empty file that i have created in the visual studio code right now here what we'll do will the first thing is we import right so for the javascript in order to import the test and the expect keyword we have to use the const okay so the const and then based on that we simply say we define a variable const and then we say expect test and expect all right and then we say where, where to import this from where to get this dependency from test and expect this is from which is basically this will require and it will be from playwright okay so you'll see that at playwright so this is the first thing that you have to do for your javascript test right now when you will use so for example if i comment this out okay so i'll say i comment this out and i start writing test okay i'll say test all right you'll see that it is not recognized or if I even just say, okay, say for example, I test and I hover over, okay, you'll see that it is not recognized. Okay, if I uncomment this, all right, and then hover over it, you will see that now I'm getting all the details of this particular method that I can use, right? So now I can write the test. Now, in order to write your test within Playwright, it has to start with test. And then within test, you have to first thing, it will accept two arguments. So first will be your test description okay so i'll say launch application okay this is simple test to launch the application so this is the text that i want to define uh, which is the title right which is string and then the function the, the callback function here so the next argument that you have to specify is the function and this function will have the steps that your test will follow okay so when we say function you can define it with async okay so why async so async keyword is required because any tool that is built on javascript okay or node.js all right is asynchronous and in order to make sure that your test steps execute in a synchronous fashion basically one after the other we have to define async okay all the function as an async in the playwright because playwright is built on node.js and javascript so that is why async is required when we say async or asynchronous what is the difference now in selenium you would have seen 
that it is synchronous. When we say synchronous, it means that your test that you write, the steps that are there within your Selenium test, one get executed only when the first step got executed, next step will be launched or next step will be invoked, right? So automatically in the synchronous execution, the execution of the next step will be not proceeding unless first step finishes, okay? Or first step in the test finishes. When first is finished, second will be launched. Uh, second will be taken up second finishes then third for example you are launching the application right so when the launch of the application is successful then it will go ahead and click on some button or start typing on in some particular text box based on your second or third step okay but in asynchronous applications or asynchronous automation tool like playwright or cypress what happens is all the commands that are there within your test case can start executing at the same time right there is no sequence there is no uh, promise that the execution order will be maintained one after the other right so for example first this only this line will get executed first then second line will get, get executed only then third line will get executed once second is finished so this is the problem with the asynchronous testing framework and in order to resolve this playwright and cypress both have handled this and in playwright you have to use the async keyword okay along with async keyword we have to use the keyword await okay now any function that you define within the test has to follow or has to have this async all right async keyword and in the async keyword we will define a function right so we'll say so here i'm trying to launch a page okay so i'll just put an argument there all right and then i'll simply say so this is a arrow function and i have explained about the arrow function in the postman api series already but i'll cover a complete separate javascript tutorials tutorial series wherein you will be able to understand the uh, things already but if you are absolutely new i'll highly recommend to follow the javascript tutorials from the api series as of now okay you will get all these details like what is this test function and then it accepts two argument these are the callback function right uh, another function is being accepted so this is a callback function right and then this is an arrow okay because we are using the arrow so this is arrow function and then we'll define all the steps within these curly braces so this is the basic format of your test case now within this curly braces okay now i can go ahead and start writing my test so in order to write the test uh, the first step is to basically launch the page right so i'll say page all right and then dot you have the keyword go to okay so you start typing go to so in playwright you have the keyword go to and if you just hover over you will see that this is a method and you can specify the url which you want to open okay so i can say okay go to and the url okay the url the test url that we are, we are uh, using will be parasoft parabank okay this is the dummy uh, banking app that we'll be using for this particular tutorial and then in the quotes i'll put the url that i want to launch all right followed by so here we have to use semi all right so now another thing so basically we have defined this as an async but then if there is a next step now we know that this is a javascript based tool right so uh no node.js library and uh built on javascript so if there is another action that i do here so page or something right then there is no guarantee that unless until this finishes this step finishes only then the next step will get executed right so in order to maintain that guarantee the next keyword which is await you have to always use await along with async await you have to use so that this number four gets executed only then number five whatever you write on number five will get it okay so this is basically how you are going to document your test case all right now in the next step what we can do is we can test something right so let's say for example i launch this particular uh, app i want to check the title of the app okay so i can say all right there is a keyword expect that we have used right so we have imported expect as well which is basically what if i simply say expect you will see that it is going to help us to match the expected with the actual right so i can say okay expect and then you'll see that it will expect the actual and then we can match it right with what what we were what we are trying to match against all right so we can say okay expect page all right and because we have launched the page okay so we have opened the page and now on the page we are expecting something right so we can say expect page dot two okay and you will see that we have all the methods to be to be defined to be greater than right and then we have to have right so to have length property and title right so let's so for example we are trying to expect the title to be something right so i want to expect page to have title all right 
and in the title you provide a title uh, either a string or regular expression all right so let's see what is the title of this page this page so if i simply right click and inspect and let's find out okay so you'll see this is the title right so i simply can copy this all right and this is the title that is shown and i'm cross checking that the actual title on the page that is displayed is actually what i'm expecting right so i'll simply go ahead and in the quotes i single quotes or double quotes i can simply provide the title that i have all right now this await keyword right now because in every step you have to make sure that you are using await all right why because playwright is built on node.js javascript library and node.js by default or basically javascript is asynchronous so in order to make it synchronous so that each step is executed successfully only then next step is executed right for that we have to use await all right await keyword along with the async now if you don't use await what will happen is both fourth and fifth steps will be fired all at once okay and that will break because the page hasn't been launched yet and you are trying to expect something or check the title right that is where this is how we are going to handle or playwright handles the asynchronous behavior all right so this is the first test case this is the first completed test case it has been saved all right now how we are going to execute it now previously we have seen that in order to execute the test case you can directly click on this execute button all right and it will execute in the incognito uh, sorry in the headless mode right and this is coming from the add-on that we have installed right the extension but from the command line how we are going to execute so we'll simply go ahead and see the documentation right so we have written the test case now we go to the running test case and from the command line we can execute the test case very easily so what is the command there are different commands that you will get so if you want to run your test case in the ui mode right so for better developer experience you need to have a high, double hyphen ui okay which will launch the playwright ui and the the command line is basically to run all the test case simply npx playwright test to execute a single test case npx playwright test and specify the file name of the test that you want to execute right then you want to set uh, run a set of test file then you simply specify the folder all right so test a specific folder then you have a different run files that have a landing or log login in the file name right so you simply for example in the file name you have specific keywords then you can simply specify those keywords all right so there are different options here now the important thing here is that by default when you do npx playwright test it will run all the test cases in the headless mode wherein browser won't be, won't be launched now if you want to execute a test in a head headed mode basically when uh, you want browsers to be launched then you dub, append double hyphen headed okay so let me copy this particular command here and i'll change the file name that i want to execute and rest everything is all same here. all right so this is the command that we'll use we'll come here and we'll simply paste that particular command so npx playwright test and then you specify the file name that you want to execute the test that you want to execute what is the test that we want to execute it is first test.spec.js okay so i'll say first test.spec dot js okay and i want to run it in the headed mode i want to have the browser launch and i want to see the execution how the execution is happening for this first test case that we have documented so i'll simply click on enter and the execution should start so you'll see that it is uh, launching this is the test name right launch application and the browser has been launched and you'll see that the test the browser has been launched and it has quickly executed the test right and this is the another execution which is on the web kit right and then it should do on the okay so you'll see that by default automatically it has executed the test case into different browsers all right and in order to see the report html report also gets generated so in order to see that you'll simply have to run the command npx playwright show report okay so i'll simply run this particular command all right move it okay so npx playwright show report and let's see the report of the execution you'll see that it is launching the report and you'll see chromium firefox webkit so all three browsers the execution has happened when we executed that particular file all right if you have to choose a specific browser only then we have the option in the command as well okay we can choose that which i'll cover in the other tutorials but here you'll see all of the tests and all the report basically is available here if you go to the detail the report is all there right so report is all there everything that you have done in your uh, test is all captured here all right and what exactly it is doing at this particular step right first step it is basically opening the page then you'll see this little highlight right exponent mark so it is basically checking this having title right and then after hook okay 
So all of these details are available in your test execution report, which is very all right. So that is all about the first test case or how you are going to start your journey with Playwright automation. It is very, very simple. Initial couple of things are important to understand, but otherwise it will be a lot easier to pick up Playwright or Cypress test automation tools as compared to Selenium with Java, right? Because in Selenium with Java or Selenium with Python, you have to basically build everything from scratch, like reporting engine, it doesn't come built in, right? You have to have your um, uh, testing library, for example, test, test ng uh, to be built in. You have to build your own logging library or import the logging library and build that all capability. But in these tools, everything comes built in and saves a lot of time. And I think this is the good usage of the testers time, right? You are not there to build complex automation framework that you just keep maintaining right all the time you are there to test and ensure quality of the product and the tool that utilize the minimal time to set up and get up and running with your automation test case is the best and that's my opinion um, somebody else might be having a different opinion but i think the purpose of testing should not be to build excessively complex automation framework that become itself very high maintenance cost okay so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching